order up. Whether you like it fried, flipped, dipped, or all rolled into one, we're tempting your taste buds with some of the Bay Area's best takeout. Oh man, yeah. I ate a lot of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you smell great. <laughs> hey, it's my ranch dressing. <laughs> Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors, whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. It's our food rescue program that feeds people, not landfills. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and over 4,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. The Bay Area airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome back to Check Please Bay Area. Since we can't be in the studio with new guests just yet, we're on the road at Jordan Winery in Healdsburg. Today we're looking back at some of our guests' favorite spots for takeout. These Bay Area eateries are cranking out seriously delicious food to go. Our first four picks are all about comfort. I was working as a corporate attorney, actually, and super miserable. And I came home one day from work, and I really wanted some comfort food. And so I pulled out my dad's recipe and started cooking. And that was pretty much the aha moment, where I was like, wait a minute, this is the best mac and cheese I've ever had, and there's no restaurant that's dedicated to mac and cheese. Someone should do this, and that someone should be me. I'm Erin Wade, and I'm the founder and CEO of Homeroom in Oakland. The name of the restaurant is Homeroom. The hope is that it brings you back to Homeroom, which was a class in school that honestly had no real purpose other than just throwing paper airplanes, goofing off with your friends, eating lots of mac and cheese. I mean, mac and cheese is such a simple dish. It's five ingredients, so if, if any of them don't shine, you definitely taste it. So you want to be using whole full fat milk, butter, flour, really, really good cheese. So our mission is to be the best part of people's day All right, guys. for both our customers and our staff. My littlest fans are Ellie and Isaac, my two kids, and they are just obsessed. And actually, Ellie asked me the other day, she got into bed with me in the morning, and she was like, Mommy, when you die, can I be the boss of Homeroom? That is how much she loves it. She's just waiting for the day she can take over the mac and cheese empire. <laughs> Okay, I have to say, in all my years, a restaurant devoted to mac and cheese. <laughs> Just explain this to me. Yeah, I grew up a big mac and cheese fan. My mom was a mac and cheese fan. Mm -hmm. It makes me think of home. Once I discovered Homeroom, I was obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> and I ordered it more than I care to admit. And you take it to go. <laughs> yeah, take it to go. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little different. It gets a slightly different consistency when you get it delivered versus when you go there. It's real creamy. And it's high. Piping hot. Mm -hmm. Piping hot. I mean, sure. they serve it to you right out of the oven. Right. You know, I've bounced around the menu a little bit, but I keep going back to the classic Mac. There's some mix of cheeses. Yeah. I think there's some pecorino, cheddar. You gotta get it with the breadcrumbs. Adding the, the breadcrumbs on top just gives it another dimension. Mm -hmm. It's both creamy and a little bit crunchy at the same time, but not grainy. It just comes together in this heavenly pot of melty, cheesy pasta. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you like mac and cheese to begin with? I'm on the fence. Do your kids <laughs> like mac and cheese? My kids love mac and cheese, and I always end up eating their leftovers. Yeah, I do that too. <laughs> my daughter stuck with the classic, and she really, really loved it. Um, me and my son were a little more ambitious. I called for the spicy crab, mm -hmm. big size portions, you know, with a good panko crust, really creamy, and I could taste a lot of different cheeses. But you can get gluten free, right? And gluten free. Yeah. Yeah, there, I and I think dairy free, and vegan yeah. as well. Vegan yeah, as well. You can. Yeah, you can. I mean, we started with uh, sides, which mm -hmm. there's not very many of, but what we did have, we had the glazed carrots, which were delicious. But I also recommend the spicy cauliflower. Mm. Cauliflower is cooked perfectly, crunchy, and then you get that spice in there. Very good. And then they start breaking in the like bowls of mac and cheese. <laughs> and we did the chicken bacon ranch yes. mac and cheese. Yeah. It was delicious. Mm -hmm. I had the crab myself, just the crab, not the spicy crab. Mm -hmm. It was super crispy. The bread crumbs is the way to go. You're absolutely right. Yeah. It creates like this nice 
kind of dome to crack into yes. and then you start delving in. Right. The flavors were great. There was a lot of crab in there. It was so super yummy. It came out piping hot. Mm -hmm. okay. And we were sitting outside. Um, we got there super early because mm -hmm. we had heard about the wait. So that's the tip, go early. Go early. Yeah. Go early. For sure. They have a beautiful cookbook of all the classic recipes. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I'm going to try some of that at home. I've been in the restaurant business since I can remember. And when I had my son, I left the restaurant business to work for a nonprofit in Guatemala and in southern Mexico in Chiapas. And we ran an education program that combined financial literacy training and microcredit loans to support women and small businesses there. And I kept thinking to myself, like, this is something that I should recreate in my own neighborhood in Bayview. So I bought this food truck and uh, got it going. I moved to Bayview uh, 15 years ago, and at the time it was a different landscape. There weren't a lot of restaurants. It really did typify a food desert. There's so many great resources here in the Bayview, like Molinari Salami, who's been here for decades, as has Evergood Sausage Company. We've used both of them. We've got the produce market here. We've got tons of bakeries. I really tried to build it in a backyard style. So I wanted it to be kid friendly. I wanted parents to be able to come here and hang out and enjoy a glass of wine and have pizza and let the kids kind of run around and feel safe. And I wanted it to feel like it was in celebration of this area. We've got the best weather. We've got a very neighborhood vibe. And I really wanted that to be celebrated at Olgood. It is so hard to find a restaurant where kids are welcome. They're allowed to act like kids. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking for local pizzerias and when we came upon it, I'm like, oh my God, how have I never discovered this before? It is the best place to take kids and the food is really delicious, well-made food. I always start with the arugula salad. It is really an art to have such few ingredients and make them taste good. It's got the acidity of the lemon and that pepperiness of the arugula and the pine nuts give it that crunch that is just, you need, you need that texture in a salad. Right. And my daughter is a pepperoni girl. My oldest daughter, pepperoni, more pepperoni the better. And my little one loves the margarita. I, on the other hand, am a huge fan of the hot link one because I like spice. And I, it, I've never seen a pizza with hot links on it. And I love hot links and I love pizza. Why would they not be delicious together? <laughs> the star of all of the pizzas, though, is the crust. It's the Napoleon style. Yeah. I'm married to a New Yorker, so he can be pretty partial about his pizzas, and he loves it there. So, Napolitano. exactly, yes. exactly. And but you don't around. have to have kids to no. eat at this place, yeah. right? I thought it was a really fun atmosphere because it's like kind of like a food truck park. That's mm -hmm. what it reminded me of. Yeah. So you just yeah. order at the bus yeah. or whatever, then you you know you sit down at the picnic bench, like really fun environment. And I had the Nola Mufaleta sandwich. It has like an olive salad, yep. and then they put some uh, salami and ham. Yeah. A little bit salty. I mean, with those ingredients, I mean, that's kind of yeah. what, you, what you're asking right. for yeah. anyways. Yeah. And then I also had the Italian sausage pizza. Mm -hmm. I think that was definitely the standout of the meal for me. The crust was really good, like Perfect. that nice Perfect. chewy yeah. crust. But you could tell like all the ingredients were quality ingredients because yeah. you had like a cool ricotta, the salty sausage, yeah. and then salty capers too, mm -hmm. and then some uh, little chili flakes. I had the sausage pizza also. Oh, okay. I had sausage and the... Um, prosciutto pizza. Mm, prosciutto, and second so, favorite. Yeah, <laughs> I happen to be a super tomato sauce girl, so it's really light on the sauce, mm -hmm. so that was the only oh. thing that bummed me out. But I love that there's a super creamy cheese that they put on the pizza, and yeah. so that, that was like my favorite part of it. Mm -hmm. I love that neighborhood. I love Bayview Hunters Point. It's not your touristy San Francisco. Yeah, I, well, I've never really seen a restaurant like this mm -hmm. ever, <laughs> like ever. It's like a part picnic, part nursery, where there's all these plants mm -hmm. around. Right. So it's, it ha definitely has its own feel. It's very unique. This is a place where you can meet people, be friends. This is like a punk rock, old time dive bar environment. <laughs> Hi, I'm Adachi, so welcome to my restaurant, Aburaya. And yeah, we wanted to do something fun, and I wanted to do some sort of music venue type business. Very, very casual. Like, you don't have to dress up anything. We're friendly. We use thigh meat so that 
has more moisture in it, so it's kind of juicier. And also, we don't do typical flouring, so we use potato starch. That makes it gluten-free too, so just it opens the door to more people. We use shiokoji, so that is farming rice, sea salt, water mixture that gives a lot of umami when you marinate something. Wonderful ingredients. This is what I like, like music, great food, great people. That's all I need. I love it. Yeah, great. This is not just traditional fried chicken. Not at all. Most people, when they think about fried chicken, they either think about a soul food joint, your like local Chinese restaurant, or your Korean spot. Mm -hmm. So uh, I always love introducing people to the spot for the first time. And then they usually go, oh my god, this is so good. And it's soaked in sake mm -hmm. and, you know, and a fermented rice kind yes. of coating. Uh, it is definitely distinctly different, isn't it? That's one of the reasons mm -hmm. why I like it, because it's actually more of a thinner coat than traditionally American chicken. Mm -hmm. That's why I liked it, too. The karage. Yeah, mm -hmm. it yeah. was light and fluffy. There wasn't, like, gobs of batter in it. It Absolutely. was on point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The chicken was juicy. It wasn't over fried. Oh, man. Yeah. I ate a lot of chicken <laughs> <laughs> that night. Well, and you can order different sauces yeah, and rubs and totally. things like yeah, that. Small so pieces and larger just, pieces it was yeah. really did you, what kind of sauces did you we get? went with the uh, orange aioli that mm. was a really good mm -hmm. one a dry garlic rub right that you can do or teriyaki sauce the was what did you really the sancho nice. i had that yeah. one too that mm -hmm. one was we great. had to get it because the description said that it was a tingly sensation yeah <laughs> and so we had to see what that was mm -hmm. all about we yes. ordered it and it delivered it definitely yeah. had a nice yeah. little tingly sensation mm -hmm. and they all come with a little cup of miso ranch dressing yes. which i want to buy by the bottle <laughs> and carry around Absolutely. Yeah, I want to wear this perfume. Exactly. Oh, you smell great. Take it off. Delicious. So we we really that was a winner. Everybody a absolutely winner. loved the mm -hmm. Sancho. Um, we yeah. also did the mm -hmm. Japanese barbecue. Oh yeah. Which was a little spicy, not too sweet, mm -hmm. and I, I really liked that there wasn't a lot of sauce mm -hmm. on right. the chicken as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, crispy on the outside, mm -hmm. uh, tender and juicy on the inside. Right, right. There and you can order four or large four, sizes. Eight. Four, yeah, large sizes. Eight, whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did the kimchi uh, sautéed chicken thigh. Mm -hmm. That was really, really great. The, their kimchi is awesome. Yeah, and then they just sauté the thighs. So you don't, if you don't want a fried chicken option, mm -hmm. oh man, that was delicious. We had also the tater tots. Again, uh, a signature dish, <laughs> right? Fried chicken and tater tots. Yes. Yeah. And my husband always says that he just loves the hipsters for bringing the tater tot back. <laughs> it had seaweed topping on top of nori, mm -hmm. which I don't usually prefer, but it just went beautifully with the tiny little crispy tater tots mm -hmm. and it had also like an orange aioli sauce mm -hmm. in it yeah. as well. And you can order with rice as a side mm -hmm. or salad. Right. Yeah, I usually do the rice bowl. Mm -hmm. And it's great because it actually fills you Newer. up. Yeah. Dashi, one of the things he really tried to do was make sure that you could get an affordable meal to right. counter counter all this uh, overpriced San Francisco eateries. This place is vegetarian friendly as well. Yeah, we ordered the wasabi slaw. That was incredible. Right. They really do get really fresh produce. Their stuff is really, really crispy, flavorful, and that wasabi, they make, mm. right. yeah. yeah, it was really great. We really pride what we do as a family business. We're not blood, but he's like my brother, so we are a family and we want everybody to feel like that as well. My name is Evan Kidera and I'm the general manager of Senior CC. My name is Gil Piumo, I'm the chef of Senior CC. I was getting my MBA and I was searching for possibilities to open a business. Food trucks were one of my ideas and so we collabed on the ideas. He said, hey, let's do Filipino fusion with Mexican food and he had his family's recipe for seasick. It takes 48 hours just for the marinade itself. From there, we, we developed the menu. Not only the seasick taco, we have burritos, tacos, and nachos. So we created the name Senor Seasick, which kind of is a fusion of both cultures, Mexican and Filipino. So since 2010, we've grown from one truck to three trucks. For us, the experience of being at Senior Seasick is really what the brand is about, you know? I mean, you might come to our truck and there might be a long line, but it's really about the experience of being in that line. And when you get to the window, you're greeted with a smile. Your food comes out quick, it comes out hot, and when you, when you get your burrito or your taco, you're able to enjoy it and I wanted to share it with all your friends and family. 
I found this place, a friend introduced me um, about a year ago and I've been going constantly. I love this place because I love spicy. I grew up on spicy food. Uh, so it really just hits the spot. I can eat everything on the menu because- And you're a vegetarian. I'm a vegetarian, so tofu is an option on everything except for their one special they have on Tuesday, Thursdays. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to find people who do tofu correctly. And it's firm, and it's fried on the outside. And it's in this like sweet chili sauce. It gives a smoky sweet sauce. My favorite's the California burrito. <laughs> Fries and guac and uh, sour cream and cheese and the tofu. That one or the tofu sisig with uh, steamed rice because that one's really straightforward. Right. So you can just have the tofu and the rice, and it has jalapenos on it. It's got a little relish. Um, you could slog it where you put a uh, fried egg on top, which they Ooh. put they put on top of the rice. And as long as you eat Slog it fast, it, <laughs> you know it's a fried egg, so you got to eat it kind of fast. I thought that it was very very good. Um, I particularly liked the um, garlic rice that was in the burrito. The, the meat is prepared; it's almost minced. Yeah. But the spices are delicious, and the burrito was uh, just out of this world. I love spicy food as well, and uh, the spicy pork is. Amazing. Apparently, Which is their specialty. Yeah, yeah, they marinate it for 24 hours in some special spices. And I had um, both the nachos, which was like a party in my mouth, <laughs> but the nachos were definitely amazing. They were like crispy um, chips, and then the nacho cheese, sour cream, guacamole, pico de gallo, and then the jalapenos. I mean, I would definitely go back. <laughs> really good. And yeah, the rice was thing. so good. I mean, that garlic rice yeah. was just spectacular. The adobe garlic rice. The adobe right? garlic yeah. rice, that and the beans, I could have taken a bucket of that home. <laughs> well, they have the sriracha sauce. Yeah, they have yeah. a yeah. bottle with, yeah, and people are taking it by the, like, tons, and I'm thinking, tons. this is already so spicy. <laughs> and Shannon, what about the tacos? So I got a taco with the chicken in it, and I got it spicy. It was with like a lettuce and a sour cream. Right. And you taste it, and I couldn't even tell it was dark meat chicken. Right, right. So it was delicious. I, I mean, let's talk about tricks and of getting in, and maybe, you know, is there I is always, I know a day ahead if I'm going to eat there, and I definitely try to get there either right when they open. So, like, if they have a 5 o'clock dinner, I try to get there within the first half hour because there's right. not too much in line, or I wait till the very end. But at the very end, they may run out run of out your of protein. The, you're a student. As you said, this is a spot where you get your, your bang for your buck, right? I'm very cheap. <laughs> and, and this is even a little bit of a splurge for me because you're going to pay at least, you know, 10 bucks or so. Um, but it's worth it. Let me slog you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes, correct? Bilbao. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bilbao. And Telefarik Barcelona has its original outpost in Barcelona. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us what you get when you go. Usually I will have to get the pulpo teleferic most of the time to start, which is the octopus mm -hmm. dish. And they prepare it kind of like in the north of Spain, you know, with on a bed of um, potatoes and they'll yeah. broil it a little bit, grill it. So they have that nice texture and then put a pimenton de la vera, which is the Spanish paprika. So it's just kind of the overlap of flavors that I'm really used to. And I just, I love every bite. That octopus, it was amazing. Just as you described it, like yeah. the little rub that's on there. Yeah. Oh my God, that was, uh, that was wonderful. Well, I actually went for lunch and mm -hmm. went on a Friday, so it wasn't too busy, mm -hmm. um, but it was like excellent if you are going for like a business lunch or something right. like that. It wasn't too overcrowded and I came during happy hour as well. So mm -hmm. I had the red wine sangria. You actually have your choice of three different sangrias. I had the red wine. Uh, it comes with fresh blueberries, fresh raspberries, uh, fresh cinnamon stick and it was terrific. What else do you get? I love how they do paella. They really, outside of Spain, this is the best paella I have ever had. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's like, the Saria best really I've ever liked had. It and, yeah. And I, was, so. yeah. I got the carne paella and it was excellent. The best carnitas I've ever put in my mouth in my life, not kidding. So it came with sauteed vegetables uh, and it comes with the saffron rice as well. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. It was not dry. And they have different types of paella. Mm -hmm. So, cu mm -hmm. yes, currently they have the one they make, Bogavante, which mm -hmm. is a uh, Spanish word for lobster. And uh, this is served as a large paella for mm -hmm. two or three people, and it really is. This is a big serving. It's made out of different kind of seafood. Yeah, yeah and I love seafood, so I also had the jumbo shrimp, mm -hmm. which I thought was great. Yeah. And then uh, I also had the hanger steak. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. Yeah. yeah, it was really good. And the potatoes that came with it, yeah. awesome. What about jamón ibérico? Oh my God, mm -hmm. it's uh, the jamón ibérico is, you have to have that. And it is um, this marbly, you know, leg of acorn fed ham. Mm -hmm. And it's like they butter. It's it really just is. Melts <laughs> it melts in your mouth and they serve That's it with the pam tomaga, which is a very mm -hmm. Catalonian thing mm -hmm. to do. We well, didn't have that, but now I'm going back. <laughs> Go back just, just for that, for that. Right? yes. Yeah. <laughs> I need two ribeyes. Gomi Restaurant was started by my father, Giuseppe de Grande, in 1969. It was originally a jazz club on Fillmore Street. My father, Giuseppe, brought my brother and I both to the Golden Mirror at a young age, teaching us the family business. My name is Roberto de Grande. I'm Domenico de Grande, and we're at the Golden Mirror Restaurant. We've worked here since we were about 15 years old, learning all the family recipes. These are both your piccata, correct? My brother and I, we've been working so long together that we know each other's moves. Growing up in the kitchen with my dad, my dad always had the whip right nearby, so if we ever made a mistake, bam, we both get lashed. Fire two veal piccatas. That's what taught us to be good cooks. Best thing about it is my dad once told me, I'll give you guys a ladder, it's your job to climb it. We source all our food, we bring in fresh fish, Fresh veal. My mother and father, both from uh, Sicily, both from a fishing town, so they grew up on fresh seafood. If you come to the restaurant and walk down the hall towards the bathrooms, you'll find Goldie, which is a painting that is done from the back. Now, Goldie is holding a gold mirror, and she is looking at her reflection. Time, effort, hard work, sweat, it pays off. What I love about our customers is that they're family. Walking through these doors, it's like walking into our house. Bon appetit. Now, John, how often do you go to your restaurant? At least three to four times a week. You don't. I love it. I mean, if you're eating there that much, there must be a multitude of dishes. There is. I usually do an appetizer with calamari. They just do it in a little olive oil and garlic, and it's just tender, and it's crispy. Oh, delicious. And then the Caesar salad. I mean, it's enough for two people. Sometimes I go over the top and do a Caesar salad with a piece of salmon, and it, they do it just right. Remember, this restaurant's been here since 1969. That's right, owned by the same family since same, 1969. The, the De Grande family. Yeah, so this place has history. It has so much history. So and much and what I love history. about it is, there's not many old-fashioned Italian restaurants in the it's city true. anymore. So we had mm -hmm. the stuffed avocado with the, um, the Dungeoness crab, and mm -hmm. you know, with the which uh, is one of their signature dishes. Yeah, which was it actually was really good. And the sauce it was you know, that was drenched over. It was like almost like a shrimp louis, except with mm -hmm. the avocado. Piled high with crab. Piled high. You know. There was a few of us that had it, so we were like 
doing this? You know, we started with escargot, which I never had before. And it was a new, interesting experience. I really liked it. It was it was buttery, it was garlicky. Right. Um, but my favorite thing was actually the fettuccine alla romana. Probably the best fettuccine I've ever had. It was creamy, it was delicate, not too salty. It was rich without being overwhelming. The cannelloni is incredible with a red and white sauce. It's light. So you get two pieces on the plate and you want five pieces. So the lasagna is homemade. Sheets of noodles, homemade ricotta with their homemade sauce. Mm -hmm. When you put a fork in the lasagna, it's like butter. It just goes through softly. So I gotta go back for that. Oh, my lasagna is the butter. number one thing there in Kilwani. He had the uh, calamari steak that I thought it was bathed. It was like in a bath of the sauce that it was, I, I wanna say it was a caper sauce, which is olive oil, butter, just rich, cooked perfectly. Desserts? I go there. Desserts, oh, desserts, desserts. desserts. Tiramisu, my favorite. That's why I've put on 30 pounds. It's a tiramisu. <laughs> We've just scratched the surface today. There are many more Check Please restaurants doing an outstanding job with takeout and delivery. Be sure to check out our website for more inspiration. Thanks so much for joining us for a special edition of Check Please Bay Area. Until next time, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors, whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and over 4,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. It's our food rescue program that feeds people, not landfills. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was started when I was a child, with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check Please Bay Area.